are you looking to gain some hands-on cybersecurity experience? In today's video, we will build a teapot all-in-one honeypot platform supporting over 20 honeypots with lots of security tools and countless of visualization options to analyze cyber attacks in real time. It's perfect project for security researcher, analyst, or even students or someone who is trying to break into cybersecurity because you can learn a lot about current cybersecurity landscapes and even include this project on your CV, ultimately helping you get your first job in cybersecurity or to get promotion during your transition. It's not hard and honestly, it's quite fun to see the attacks in real time. So how can you build this yourself? But before we can start, there are a couple of prerequisites you are going to need. First thing is PATE. This will allow you to establish SSH connection to your VM hosted in the cloud. It's free, easy to use. So go ahead, download it and install it before you continue. Next, we will need a VM to install our honeypot on. If you don't have Azure account, you can register for free. You don't need anything. And actually the first time you will register, the Microsoft will also give you $200 in credit for free. That's actually amazing because it's more than enough to set up your honeypot in cloud for multiple days or even a month and analyze the data. And that's really everything you are going to need. So prepare everything, get your Azure portal, login, and we will start setting up our VM. So I'm logged in to Azure portal and first we will move into the virtual machines. I have it as the option right here, but you can as well search for it right here, virtual machines and move in here. Next, we will create a new one. So with this button, you can create Azure virtual machines. As you can see, I already have a teapot running in my environment. And that's because I already set it up. So once we go through the installation, this is something you will see as well if you leave the honeypot running for 24 hours because this is data for last 24 hours. So let's go back to the, to the portal and let's create our VM. I will click here. First of all, you will need a resource group. This will hold all the resources together. So the virtual machines, the IP address, the uh, network security go, uh, group and so on. So let's name this honeypot and I will give it a preface resource group that's fine uh, next you will need to name your VM so I will name it honeypot and not sure why did this happened okay Create new. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, you need to click on here. Create new resource group, honeypot. Okay, and that will create your resource group. Perfect. So virtual machines also name it. Availability zone. You don't need to change this one. Uh, availability zone one is fine. Image. This is very important one. You need to set it up to Ubuntu Server 24.0 for previously i have used debian but it's not working anymore and even the debian 12 is not working i'm not sure according to the documentation it should work but for my deployment the ubuntu server is working fine at least in the azure maybe for aws something else will work or gcp i'm not sure you need to try it yourself uh, the deployment is not perfect, but Ubuntu server should work fine for this case. All right, the size. Another important one, just make sure that you have 16 gigabits of memory. So I will leave it as it is. Actually, you can see the price. So I will pay 146 euros per month. If I leave it running, you can also uh, enable to auto shut down this VM and that way you could save some money but if you auto shut down it 
you won't get any data because the attackers wouldn't be able to attack your honeypot, right? Another important part is authentication type. Uh, I will check the password and provide it with a unique username and unique password. So my username will be cybercheck and I have prepared my password. Just make sure it's secured and secure port SSH 22 is fine. All right. So once you have it all set up, you can go ahead and click on next to the disk. Here we need to change this. We need OS disk type uh, type, type size. Uh, so OS disk size should be 256 giga bits. Um, that's because the prerequisites uh, you will need this amount of this size and i believe that's all uh for the networking we can leave it as it is and we will later actually change this so click on review and create this will check if everything is set up correctly here you can see how much i will pay each hour so even if you let this running for a couple of hours you can you would pay like one euro that's not <laughs> insane right so let's create and very shortly the deployment should finish in the meantime um, let's actually go to the virtual network and create new inbound rules so the hackers can find the VM and can target all the honeypots that will be created. It might take like one minute to create your VM and once it's finished you should see this page rubber over here. Your deployment is complete and you can click on go to resource. This will move you to this page. The important information is here, public IP address. We will use this IP address to connect to our VM. Before we do so, on the left side, we have network settings. So if you click on this, we can create a new port rule. So let's click here and let's create new inbound port rule. And the destination, find destination port. That will be everything from uh, one to 65,535 protocol any action will be allow the name is fine you can go ahead and click on add this will allow any connection of course this is not recommended for production in the documentation page on official github repository for the teapot you would find which port are used for what and the SSH port honestly should be only allowed from the trusted locations. So your personal IP address, for example. But that's it. Uh, now, once the VM gets created, we can go ahead and connect to it. But before we start the installation process for Teapot, let's visit the GitHub repository page and see what are we even installing. Right now, I'm on the official GitHub repository page for the Teapot. And if I scroll down, here is TLDR. So make sure that you have the minimal system requirements. And if we scroll down, here are disclaimers, technical concepts. Here are all the teapots that I was talking about. So we have help pot, honey trap, log for pot. And if you are interested in any of them, you can just simply click on this and you will get more details about this particular honeypot itself. All right, if we scroll even further down, here are the tools that you are also installing. So we have CyberChef, Elasticstack, we have Spiderfoot. All the awesome stuffs get installed as well with this teapot. 
So here are the services, system requirements. Just make sure that you have the 16 gigabits of RAM and 256 gigabits of storage. Very important one. You can run this teapot on VirtualBox, on, on the hardware itself or in the cloud. Just make sure to check the discussions for any issues you, if you are experiencing them. Because not every distribution that is mentioned in the, uh, in the GitHub repository is supported with the cloud. And I think they even tell you some users report working installation on other clouds and hosted. Maybe different. You're unsure you should research always. Okay, uh, here are the ports that I was mentioning. So you could also go by this and only allow. Um, I think this will change. You are not going to access SSH over port 22, but the management is somewhere else. Let me see. As here. So this one. I think even this one, right, should be maybe allowed only from trusted locations and everything else you would leave open on the internet. System placement, installations. Okay, so now we are getting to installations. Here are the distribution names that are supported for the teapot. So we are going to install this on this Ubuntu 24. And here are the installation steps, how to set it up. So now that we have everything prepared, let's open the party and connect to our VM. First of all, we need the IP address. So let's go back to the Azure portal. And in here you can click on copy to clipboard. This will copy the IP address. And now we will open the party, paste it in here. The SSH connection type is okay and just click on open. So this will open a new window for you. And actually it's more on my second monitor. So <laughs> I need to move it right here. Okay. Now login. Login will be the username that we have set up in the previous step in our Azure portal as we were creating the VM. So mine is Cybercheck and the password is here. Just make sure that even if you paste it, nothing will show up. Just press the enter and it should login you in. Perfect. So first of all, let's update our packages. So everything is prepared and we can then continue with the installation. All right, let's upgrade. Okay, next we will need to install Git uh, as we will download or get the repository. So sudo apt install git. Uh, okay, so I guess it's already installed. Perfect. And now we can go ahead and copy the repository. So I'll go all the way back here and copy this. And let's call git clone and paste this in here. Okay, perfect. Now let's go actually back to the GitHub repository and installation. Okay, installation. Installation. What's next? Change into the default uh, folder. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so we are in this folder and now we can run, run the installer. So nothing complicated. Let's copy this command and install the teapot. Now it will start installing the teapot, but don't leave anywhere just yet because you still need to confirm something during the installation process. All right, after a minute or so, I am given an option to choose which teapot type I want to install. So you have three options, Hive, Sensor or Mobile. We will go with H for Hive. And now it wants to enter a unique web username. So I will go with Cybercheck. Is this correct? Yes. Now it wants 
also the password. So put in unique password. Okay, it's asking me if I want to keep insecure password. Well, that's fine with me. And now it should finish the installation process. And once it's done, we will just restart the VM. And after that, everything is prepared and finished. We can access the teapot management section and start playing with it. All right, now it needs to be rebooted. It also warns you that once it's rebooted, you can connect to it via SSH on this port. So that's fine. You can reboot right from here. So sudo reboot will reboot the system and or you can also do it from here in the portal. You can click on restart and click here to restart your VM. Once it's done, you can access the management page. If we go back, there's, uh, I believe, first step after installation. So here you can connect to it via the SSH or use the teapot web UI and you will simply establish connections with your IP on this port. So we can prepare this. As you can see, I am already connected to my previous VM, but can also connect to this one. So if I click on this, place in here, so it's my IP address and double six, four, two, nine, seven. Let me copy this. I don't think it will be available yet. Okay. Yeah. So give it a brief moment. It will take a while for the VM to reboot. And once it's done, you can try access the web UI interface. I waited a little bit and now the web interface should be available. Just one small thing, make sure to mention HTTPS in the URL. Once you do, you should get something similar to mine. The connection is not safe. That's okay. Click here, proceed to unsafe. Now it wants the username and password. This is the username and password that we have used during the installation process. So let me fill this in. So my name was Cybercheck, I believe, and the password here. No, don't tell me I didn't write it correctly. Uh, cyber check. So here you have it. In just a couple of minutes, you can set up your very own honeypot, host it in the cloud and analyze cybersecurity attacks in real time. And as I was mentioning before, you can even include this on your CV if you're trying to break into cybersecurity. You can put something like this on your CV that you have monitored and analyzed your honeypot data, but do it. Don't just write it on your CV, but do it. Uh, look at the CVs that are being exploited, look at the IP addresses, write an article about it, write about some CVs that you have seen in the wild and use this platform to help you learn about cybersecurity threats. And that's basically it. That should be the main goal. Not just create it and look at the map, but use it and dive deeper into the data. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and like. I will definitely create more content about cybersecurity labs in the future. I'll see you in the next video.